Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. I just wanted to go over a little uh, random video in Java and it's how to set up a basic JUnit test case. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a Java project and I'm just going to say uh, JUnit test. Okay, and everything else looks good. Hit next, finish. And we're going to go in there and let's set up some type of package. Um, so it's not default, we'll just say testing. Alright, everything looks good. Hit finish. And inside this testing package, we want to create a class. And this is going to be a regular Java class, so go to class. And let's say JUnit testing. We'll call it that. And we don't want a main method in there for now. We're just going to use this to test a method or two. So I'm going to create a method where, a simple one, so let's say public, and I want to return an int because I want to square some number, so I'm just going to say square, All right? and I'm going to pass it in one number. There you go, so I'm passing in an int and giving it the variable name x, let's open up the curly brackets, and we want to return x times x. Okay, that's simple. Let's get a little space for visualness. Alright, and now what I want to do is I'll give it a little more complex method, and we are going to have a method that takes in a string, and let's just count the number of times A occurs in the string. So let's say public, and I want to return an int because I want to return the count, like the number of how many times A occurs. But the parameter we're going to be passing in will be a string. So let's just say count a. So in the parameters, we're passing in a string, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it word. It could be longer than a word. It could be a sentence. So whatever name you feel is comfortable for uh, what you will remember it is used for. So now in the logic, I want to keep a count variable. So let's start with that first. We're going to set count equal to zero, and we want it to be of the type int. All right, now we need to loop through the word and check on each character in the word to see if it's an A. So let's write a for loop real quick. I'll just say for int i equals zero. And then while i is less than word.length. And let's increment i every time. All right, now for every time that we're at i, we want to check if that character is an A. So the way we do that is we're gonna have an if statement. I'm gonna say if word, which is our variable name that we're passed in, word dot char at, which means the character at this particular index. And since we're starting at zero and we're going to loop through the length, that is how we're going to have our index. So I is the current letter you're on. All right. So it's going to say if word dot char at that index equals and to check against a character, we're just going to use single quote marks. I'm going to say A, and that's just for lowercase, so let's just double check in case someone puts in the uppercase. We're going to say OR, and that's uh, these two lines right here, which is above your enter key. So if you can't find it, just look above your enter key. And now say word dot char at I equals equals capital A. There we go. And if one of those is true, all we want to do is increment count. There we go. And then outside of this for loop, what we're going to do is we're going to return count. You don't want to return count inside the for loop because it'll keep running. We want count to increment until that for loop is done and then whatever count had gotten up to is the number we want to return. So return count. All right, so these two methods look good. Now I'm going to show you how to make a JUnit test. So all we have to do now is we can come over here, click on any of these, and we can just say new JUnit test case right here. And I'm going to, you want to make a test case, maybe one per method. So for this one, I'll just say square test. Square test, finish. And it says JUnit4 is not on the build path. Do you want to add it? And this is real simple. Just say perform the following action. 
and add it to the build path. All right, and you'll see that you got the jar files right here, so you can execute the code. And by default, it'll say fail, not yet implemented. All right, so we can get rid of that and we can put in what we want to test. So this is called JUnit testing. So JUnit testing, and I'll just give it a variable name, test equals new JUnit testing. And that is an object, and we are going to now get the result of passing in some type of parameter. So let's say int, and I'll say output, equals test dot, and we called it square. So I'm going to test it against some number. Let's just put in a 5. So now what this means is test is the object that we created from the JUnit testing class. So the method we're calling is square, which should return an int. And we're just going to call that int output. And we're passing in the parameter 5, so we expect the output to be 25. So let's test that our code is correct and it works the way we think it should work. So what we're going to do is call a static method and it's called assert equals and then inside of here it takes two parameters. The first parameter is the value you expect to get and I expect to get a 25 and the second parameter is this right here, output. All right, so we're hoping that the output equals 25 and just in that and that's all you need for this basic test right here and we can say run make sure it says square test we're probably need to save everything and right here it's good it's green it says runs one one zero errors zero failures and let me mess this up so we can see what it's like to get a failure so now I have 26 I'm gonna save it and run and it failed so let's make that back to 25 and now let's make a test case for count A. So the way we do that, make sure you get out of the JUnit right here and go back to pa Package Explorer and we're going to do a new JUnit test case and let's call that count A test. Right, finish and go into your test method right here and we're going to pretty much do the same thing JUnit testing I'll just call it test again equals new JUnit testing and and then with the semicolon and we are expecting an int again because if you remember we are returning the count which is an int so let's go back here and we're going to say int and we can call it output again call it result we can call it whatever you want it's just a variable name so now we can say int output equals test dot count a which is right here and let's pass in some type of string I'm just gonna say alphabet and that has two a's in it so remember we're gonna use that static method assert equals and let's say two is what we expect to get out of it and output is the actual result so we want these two to be equal All right now let's run that one let's just save it and then run and it worked let's change this to I don't know Java bean there you go and that should give us a three so this should give us a false so that did not work alright Let's just go back to, I can just change this to a 3. Okay, so now that will be true. Save it. Alright, so now we have two test cases that are true. Instead of having to write a method for each test case, and we have to run each one individually, we can do a test suite, which means we are going to put all of these into one uh, file, and then we can run all the tests at once. So let's do that real quick. Go back to your package explorer. So now we're going to open up a test suite. We're going to go to new and we're going to go to other. So follow me, this is important. And when you get to this wizard, what you're going to see is all of these options. You're going to want to click Java. If, if it hadn't already been open, it probably will. And then you go down to where you can find JUnit. Open that up. And now you have JUnit test case and JUnit test suite. 
and you can see these are the only two ones we have. Let's click test suite and let's make sure we have the right package which was testing and it shows us the two JUnit classes we had in there which was square test and count a test. So we want to add all of those to the test suite. Now we have this thing it says all test.java says run with suite.class and the suite classes we're running are the count a test.class and super test.class and don't worry about this for now this should work perfectly fine for a simple project and it shows you that you had two runs and they were both successful so this is a great way of testing your code every time that you add something new especially when you have a huge project and one mistake can have you scratching your head for hours and hours trying to figure out what went wrong so this is a really cool way of testing your code and this is a very very small example just to give you the feel for how it works but obviously with a bigger project this would be a much bigger thing but it will help you in the professional world because once you make a mistake it costs your company money to pay you the hours still to go back and fix whatever's wrong so this definitely is a lifesaver in some situations. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't.